If some of you did not have this category before this message. You assumed everything I'm believing for or everything God has promised is going to happen in my lifetime. And now you actually know, oh, there's actually four different categories. What I'm waiting for falls, can fall under potentially. What I'm waiting for can happen. It can be a yes. It can be a not yet. Like it's not going to happen as when you think. Or maybe it's a no, it's not going to happen at all. Or, okay, it's going to happen beyond my life when, and I won't even see it. And here's the first thing you need to know. As you're waiting on God, whether you know it's going to happen or when or, or even God, if God's validated that, you need to choose to see what God has certainly promised in Scripture. Or I'll say it like this, choose to focus on what God has certainly promised in Scripture. We spend, there's almost like, okay, if you think about of, of, of our hopes, like a resource, um, our, our hope is a limited resource, you might say. I only have so much hope to invest into something. Um, I only have so much fill in the blank to dedicate towards something. I'm, I'm fallible. I'm not infinite. I'm finite. Um, I'm not an infinite source. I'm a not infinite source. Because of that, a lot of Christians spend their limited resource of hope directed toward things that God hasn't explicitly promised or guaranteed are going to happen. And so what Christians do, and, and I've done this, I still struggle with this, man, is we spend so much of our limited resource waiting for things God has not guaranteed are going to happen. And then all the things he guaranteed will happen and promised and for sure are coming we don't spend our hopes in any of, in the direction of those things. And so Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13, it says, these all died in faith. Watch all of the different patriarchs and biblical characters of the Old Testament, not having received the things promised. Bummer, or maybe not. Maybe an example. Maybe that's best. Maybe that's most beneficial to their lives is that they don't receive the things promised yet in their, in their entirety. But instead, here's what they do. Even though they, they didn't receive the full scope of God's promise in their lifetime, here's what they did. Having seen them, they greeted them or welcomed them, anticipated them from afar, right? And they acknowledged this. They were strangers and exiles on the earth. So I, I encourage you to write this down. Here's, here's a sub point that I want you to really meditate on. Take this, sit on it, write this down. What you might not see shouldn't distract you from what God promised you will see. Because again, a lot of believers, they spend their whole life waiting for what they might not even see at all. The things God hasn't promised regarding their emotional state and addiction and, and financial condition and where they're going to live and how, who's going to be a part of the family and how long they'll be alive and if they'll be healed physically this side of heaven and when that'll happen. They spend their whole life and their limited resource of hope all spent on what they might not even see. And then that distracts them from what God promised they will see. And so they walk around very discouraged, just Eeyore. Just walking Christian Eeyores who don't see life the way God has called us to because they're constantly having their expectations like disappointed and God's not meeting their expectations, right? When God never actually told them to have those expectations. So here's another way to say it. Focus on what you know is coming instead of obsessing over what you don't, right? I, I should, as a believer, choose... I'm going to focus on what I know is coming instead of obsessing over what I don't know is coming, right? Otherwise, those things you might not see rob you of the limited resource of hope you have when you could have spent that on in the direction of what God promised you will, right? So I'll, I'll say it again for those who, who are nerds like me and you love the notes. What you might not see should not distract you from what God promised you will see. Okay? You and I choose what we focus on. We decide to see certain things. We decide uh, what we're going to believe for and expect. That's why Colossians talks about set your mind on things above where Christ is. We choose where we're going to fix our mind and our eyes and our spiritual eyes. So 
um, think about all the things God has promised in scripture. Like there's no stopping those promises from happening. They're absolutely going to happen. Satan can't stop it. The kingdom of darkness can't stop it. Every human being in rebellion to God can't stop it. Think about those promises. Which of those promises have you lost sight of? And you've just, you're distracted from them. Because you've been focusing on things that might not even happen. I, I, like as a believer, because I, I just don't like being disappointed, frankly. Like I'm not someone who likes having my expectations let down. I would rather spend my whole life focusing on all the things God said are going to happen instead of just looking at the things in my life that he hasn't guaranteed or he's going to do or, or, or make happen. Because then what you do is you set yourself up for success so that when those other things don't happen that God never said would, he never guaranteed they would, when they don't, you're like, that's okay. Because my attention and my devotion is directed toward the promises of God, not the ideas of my own mind. Number two, 